<laughs> Hello! Welcome! Uh, great question. No. <laughs> What is up, people? What is the Star Wars in the background? Hold on. Collector's Edition Republic gunship. Pretty cool. Can you go back on this? Yeah, that's pretty awesome. That's like my childhood dream Lego right there. Uh, you cannot actually time out me. I would do it if I can. Where is RDT? He's not online. That's unusual. I need him to time out people. Hold on. Uh, time out. Uh, all right. I'll do like a formal thing. Uh, I think this is it. Okay. And then if I, if I go up in here, I can't go up in here. All right. Hello. If you do not know who I am, uh, my name is your kidneys. I am a out of the park, perfect team player among other things. Um, hi. Uh, I don't stream too often right now. I've just been busy with a lot of things going on, um, but we're we're doing well. Um, the plan is to, if not beforehand, uh, bounce back really strong off 24. Um, not be the place. I did not nap today. I've been up for a long time. Um, but anywho. Welcome. Um, thank you everybody for watching so far out of the park marathon. I've been tuning in and out all day. I've been working on some stuff that we might show off in a bit. Um, but the stream has been fantastic. All the streamers, such a cool thing. Laptop pound put together. So I'm super excited for all that. Um, gosh, that's been so long. How is everyone doing? Um, uh, how are we all? Um, I know I just, disappear on and off all the time imagine streaming during this listen you're up next so got some coats yeah that's just like the family coat rack i don't live alone so <laughs> uh preparing stuff for stream is where you draw the line i didn't exactly get done what i wanted to get done um hello <laughs> thanks yuka and teddy for the subs Always appreciated. Um, oh, it's pretty cold out, but it's not like freezing, freezing. You actually subbed like three months ago. Yeah, I know. You're just pushing the renew button or whatever it is. What's up, Dish? All right. Um, so a few things I'd like to talk about. Um, we should probably, let me move this. Do I have anything else to move so I don't leak my desktop? Because I don't do game capture. Because I'm a heathen. Uh, we'll go here. Wow, that's really loud. Oh, it's because my volume is all the way up. Uh, the reason the stream was like a minute late is because there was a really good song on. And uh, I didn't want to mute it. So I was jamming out. Um, DRC was for the production. Exactly. Game capture doesn't work for you out of the park. Oh, I wouldn't know. I've never done it. Give away the coats. <laughs> Most of them aren't mine. Most of mine are hoodies, and they're all in my bedroom. So, um. Also, yeah. So, chat, you're gonna have to tell me because I did not think up of something. I was trying to think of something all day today. Um, how are we giving away the twenty packs? I get a giveaway. Um, I get twenty packs to give away this hour. I have to give them away. I can't keep them. Um, so on that note, y'all figure out. Um. Y'all figure out how you want that done in what ridiculous way. We got some pretty fun people in here. I'm sure you guys can come up with something. Uh, don't ask why I'm looking at this card. Uh, we might talk about it in a little bit. Um, <laughs> double it and give it to the next person, Gavagoo. 
That's actually really funny. I may do that. <laughs> uh, Wild Durden? Yes, Durden is in my division. Um, this team's pretty solid still. Um, it's a little bit older, a little outdated, but it's doing pretty well. Uh, the tallest person? Are you a tall person, Mahillion? I don't know. I'm a pretty tall person. Even boy, whoever's the most washed perfect team player. Oh, I can make so many jokes with that. I'm going to refrain from insulting several people. Um, uh, Snailman, of course, in my division, killing it as always. Uh, birthdays until end of the year. Oh, people? Maybe, maybe. If anybody washed, it's you. Um, I can't be washed. I've never won anything. You can make a poll. That's too hard. That's too hard. Too hard. Uh, that's someone not from North America. There's a lot of Canadian out of the park players. I always forget this and I always get surprised when it's like, um, laptop hound and Tessuigi earlier. We're talking about doing a Canadian showdown. Exto's in here. There's another great streamer. He's a Canadian. So, um, Oh, in North America. That's true. Not from North America. Uh, I know some Australians, Germans, British people. Can't give it to the British people, though. Um, let you pick a number? I feel like that would be very, very rigged. All right. So, um, if any of you are Discord people, which I assume most of you are who watch me, because that's where my loud mouth runs a lot. Um, uh, I have been making a few waves lately by taking the double lift approach to perfect team. Uh, I feel like I should just give the packs to anybody who knows what that means. Uh, <laughs> um, so basically, uh, gosh, how do I say this? So I've been thinking for the past week and a half, two weeks or whatever, um double lift uh no i don't actually need help i can figure it out if i need to do it um we're probably going to do it in some ridiculous way once i figure it out so uh basically um the way i've looked at this game over the past month or two has completely changed and i think Nobody really has a good grasp on it, and that there's a lot of small improvements you can make to, like, heavily maximize your team's performance, right? Um, so, in my standard fashion, um, I came out of the gate <laughs> firing with that. And uh, I offended quite a few people, I feel, by kind of saying their teams are trash. Um, however, that's what we're here to discuss. Um, so, I'm not saying my team's good. I'm missing a ton of cards. I don't really spend money on the game almost at all. So, it's, uh, you know, um, you know, limited what I can do. I don't play tournaments. I just play bronze quicks. And even recently, I've, like... Stop doing that because I've been working on some other things. However, um, here's, I, I really should have written down a list. So I had something comprehensive to do, but it wouldn't be a kidney stream. If I had any sort of structure whatsoever about what I was going to do. Right. Um, so, uh, let's talk about a few things. Okay. First off, if you're playing perfect team at a high level, right, what you know is what this man started, right? This is the person who changed the game this year, right? Snailman invented the four-man rotation in modern baseball, okay? So what that means, I'll get the notepad out because I know people are probably going to want a summary of this. So let's create a new... Oops. No, not those notes. I just need a blank help. Blank notepad. There we go. All right. Blank notepad. Okay. 
four man rotation in the uh that's a little too zoomed in. I zoom out a little more. Okay. Yes, there are as, but nobody's thought of doing it in modern perfect team. And the reason why you do it, okay, is you there is a minimum of eighteen BF or for IP for SP slash follower. Okay. However, uh, there is still a K percent boost for RPs and openers. There is a third time plus through the order penalty. Therefore, running four starters. Uh, let's you max your bullpen time, which gives you more uh, innings working around third time penalty and a percent boost. Right, so this is the logic for it, okay? Um, how it works is you can run if your pitchers throw below a certain threshold of pitches they still have to meet that minimum right they still have to meet the minimum i can reset the window it's fine i'll work on it okay so let's do this put it under me make it bigger okay so turn on word wrap i don't actually how do i turn on word wrap i actually don't know i like never do anything except just randomly write things to myself on here someone tell me how to turn it on anyway um so the thing everybody started copying view word wrap thank you great so if i do this oh beautiful okay so let's okay so by running this, right, you min-max your strikeout boost, you min-max not letting your pitchers go a third time through the order, hopefully, and you can get way better uh, stats with running a much weaker team because you're buffing everybody in the bullpen. They're pitching more. Your starters are not getting the third time through the order penalty, which is massive, right, and a whole bunch of stuff like that. So... This was probably the biggest revolution of the year. Um, you could take some of the worst pitchers that were months old, throw them in the strategy, take it perfectly. It wasn't, it's super strong. Um, I am now here to tell you that too many people are doing it. And here's why. Yes, it matters in a simulation game. It's very, very, very strong. But the issue is, uh, people figured this out, right? Snailman, the person on the stream, is the guy who figured it out. Well, if you look at his rotation, he's not running it. And I'm going to explain why, okay? Um, so here is the alternative option, okay? And I would I I want to see people doing this, and then I'll I'll explain why. Is five man rotation, and then it's a five or six man bullpen. Now, what you're gonna say is kidneys. You can't run ten people in a rotation. They'll get tired, right? I'll clarify. This is 12-man rotation. 12-man. Uh, no, no. 12-man staff. Okay. You actually can. And it works really, really well. Um, so what we're going to look at is this. We're going to look at my... Hold on. Rotation. Sorry for the flashbang. Um, no, you need to stay on top. Okay. So, 
you can see I am absolutely grinding my pitchers into the dirt. Um, and let's talk about why. So here's what's going to happen. Okay. Third time through the order penalty. There is no fourth or fifth time through as far as I can tell, right? So third time through still uh, is about as far as it gets, right? So if you're going, this is why I used to pitch count all my pitchers at like 90 or 100 because how we thought it worked was that the longer a pitcher went into the game, the worse he got. I don't believe that's the case. I believe it was just the third time through the order penalty. And once you break that, He's not going to get worse. It's just how it works, right? So if you're willing to go over that, right? You should be doing this. Where you can see... Uh, he threw 86 pitches for a complete game, but 130, 120, 130, 130. I saw a screenshot today. He's in the chat. He posted it. Be handles. His Pedro threw 175 pitches in like 12 innings, I think it was. Right? And, um, that's great because, so you're already decided I'm not going to get the stuff boost. I'm not going to get the third time through the order penalty. Okay. So there is a sort of a limit. Um, I don't know if he can throw 175 and get back to hundred percent in five days, but I know you can throw 140, right? And most of the time, the 140 is going to be good enough. So. No K percent boost. But why would I do this? Why would you do that, right? You're giving up. We talked about how big the third time through the order penalty is. We've talked about, you know, how big the K percent boost is. It's pretty big. It's not completely linear. There's a few different things that go into it, which much makes certain pitchers better than others for it, right? So why on earth would I throw my guys into the ground? That's that's the point. So we can go here, and this is the thing I've been harping on all year. Um, pitching doesn't matter. So let's talk about that, right? Pitching doesn't matter. Okay, what does that mean? Because I've said this a lot this year, and I think a lot of people have been like, that's a super stupid, really broad statement to say. How does pitching not matter, right? Okay, let's look at some data. I don't have this prepared, so give me a second. All right, come here. Yeah, okay. Uh, what years am I looking at? That's fine. All right, let's zoom in a bunch so you guys can see it. Okay. Now take a look at this. Uh, again, if you're newer here, I do spreadsheets. That's my big thing, right? I'm a big spreadsheet guy. This is a spreadsheet. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Um, just to make sure you guys can see what's going on. So what is this? Okay. Um, this is perfect league. I don't have all the recent data, but it's 2048 through 50, I think. Let me double check. 2048, 49, and 50. Yes. Okay. This is overall split as a starter. As a starter means you only started that season. If they put him in the bullpen for a game and then put him back in the rotation, I'm not going to count him because it messes my stats up, right? Because of that strikeout boost, third time through the order penalty, a bunch of things like that, right? Okay. So you can see the two obvious names at the top, right? There's some weird names. I mean, we're a little small on what I would like for data. You can see here we're under like a thousand innings on some of these guys. Actually, you know what I can do? Uh, we can go way back. Let's go back a bit. Because I would like a bigger chunk of data. So let's go through like uh, 
five, four, six, seven. Okay, much better. All right, because uh, this will give us a bunch of data. It's a little spread out, not the end of the world, right? Uh, Seasty was a monster. Nobody played this card. Um, I don't know why. This card was great. There was a few people that played this card. It was really expensive. There's only 25 of them. This card should have been like everybody running to get. Um, but if you can see here, there's CC, there's the crazy Kershaw. And then just kind of look right here. What, what do you notice? So league average for Woba against, right, is 0.332. Okay. Look how many pitchers are like in this, let's say 10 point range around league average in this mush. Um, what is it? 24 pitchers, right? And there's a little more if you go a little farther, right? Like even down to this 30, 50. I mean, if we do like, it's almost everybody. What this is, is the top 40 most used pitchers, right? So, a lot of people don't know, like, how many runs does this mean? Like, what's what's this convert to in terms of value or war or whatever? Very, very little. I mean, I can just show you right here. So, the gap between 320 and 350, right? Hold on. Let me pull this up over here so I don't break everything. Uh because I don't really want to show you guys this, but I'll just tell you the number, right? So if I do 0 0.350, 320, it's maybe, it'll be a little more because of the picture, but it's maybe tops of 10 runs throughout the season, right? So you're looking at a 10 run difference. Uh, Wait, did I say 10? Hold on. I didn't mean 10. No. Like a 20 run difference throughout a season. Uh for anybody in just about the top 30, 35 most used pitchers, right? So there are exceptions. There are times where cards are gonna blow other cards out of the water. There's a few of those right now. Right now they're like Maddox and Walter and Pedro. But what it comes down to. Yeah, thanks, Delman. Uh, we were talking about your team. Um, what it comes down to is that they're so similar. Unless I am grabbing somebody like this that is absolutely going to dominate. And when I say dominate, I mean he put up 7.2 war last year for me, right? Um, no, it's runs. Charles, it's about like two wins. Um, so, um, what it means is unless you have the top of the top, it doesn't really matter who you have. So let's, let's evaluate that, right? So unless you have So what, what do you do with this, right? Charles, I was just doing it based on a plate appearance, like that the pitchers are going to throw today, right? Um, no, I don't think you need cheese. I don't even think cheese is good this year. We can talk about that too, if you want. Um, so unless I have Maddox, Walter, Pedro, Drysdale, there's a few names, right? There's a few names up there. What should I be doing, right? Because most people aren't going to have those names. So here's where it gets interesting. If you have those names, you should be doing this. Why? There are so few pitchers in the game that are that significant of an impact, right? That you should be playing them. What did I get out of you last? I got 270 innings out of him last year. And I messed up by having a stopper for the first two days, right? 
Okay. So if you run the bullpen the right way, which is probably just something like what I'm doing, a bunch of middle relievers. So they, because if you run stoppers or closers or setups, okay, they get in the way and they pull your pitchers earlier, right? Um, so you just want to let them throw, right? Just let them throw. What are you projected for this year? Projected for about almost 290, right? Um, I don't know entirely what long relievers do in that sense. I might actually be better turning them off. I'm not sure, X, though. That's a good question. Um, so if you have those names, again, if you've done Cooperstown Club 5, really, or you're a whale, right? Do what I'm about to do. And the reason why you want to do it is you can get so much more differential out of min maxing your bats okay let's talk about that um the reason for this is something that i still see people not doing and something that the snail man has beaten to my head over and over and over again platoons okay if you look at this lineup, I have 15 batters. That is one more than almost everybody runs. I'm very, very tempted to try 16 batters. Every single one of these names is green. Why are they green? What does green mean? Why am I talking about green? Green means they are in my left lineup. Or my right lineup. I do not have one player who does not play on my team. So many times I can just pull a random team, right? I'm just pull somebody from the bottom. Uh, we go here. He's got two guys not playing out of 13 batters. He is only using 11 hitters, right? He's only using 11. He doesn't have, he's, use, he's 13 on his team. He's using 11. Right? Because he's got a sub here and a sub here. So why, what is the advantage of that? So not only are most batters splitty, right? This is the extreme example. He is amazing versus right. He is not good versus left. Okay? Not only is that the case, but if we look at most pitchers, they are also splitty vr versus left big difference so you're not just getting a slightly better bat right because somebody like joe dimaggio who has big splits is still a pretty respectable card vr except that most righty pitchers are much better versus right-handed batters so if you're playing somebody like DiMaggio both ways, he's going to do even worse than his splits look. So a real way to capitalize on this is make sure you cannot be beat. Right? You can't be beat. If you look at this, I have one lefty versus lefties and two righties versus righties. And I think I can get this down to one righty v righty and one lefty versus lefty and the offensive output you're gonna get is gonna be a much more significant margin i'm missing a lot of big cards on this team um i'm playing somebody like harry heilman all right i'm playing cards like rod carew and tome all right So, you can get so much more, right? So, we look at this card. People have hated on this card since its launch. All right? Hated on this card. If I take this card, right? We're looking at this card. Let's go find one of these, okay? Why is... Is it 1L? No, it's not. Oh, Will Williams. Thank you. Um, one of these, right? Which is the good one? This one. Okay, and we do this. Do you see how terrifying George Brett is VR? See how crazy that card is? 
It loses eye, it loses power. It's plus another 14 Babbitt to like the highest Babbitt VR in the game. And people are like, I don't have room on this team for my card, this card. When we just got Pedro, Walter, Maddox, DeGrom, and everyone's like, how do I stop all these ready pitchers? They just handed you, I, I, I don't think it's close um, between Brett and any other card. It is close between Brett and Ted, right? So, a top two hitter VR at a really hard position to play. And is a 180k on the auction house being a topper for one of the hardest mission series in the game to complete. He plays two positions too, by the way. You can play first base if you want to play some other third baseman. Um, so this one's baffling to me. I mean, you can see he just absolutely destroys right-handed pitching when he plays it. And yeah, when a lefty comes in, he doesn't do as well. But you have sliders for that. He doesn't have to play all the time. Um, and even just the starting platoon, right? So that's a big deal. Um, back to pitching, right? So we talked about what do you do if you have the big elite names? This one in particular drives me crazy because um, I feel like the people, the people I had the most issues with um, and got into debates with over the past two weeks are the people who have most of the cards, right? And they're still throwing four man 60, 18, running maybe 12 or 13 bat, oh, 13, 14 bats, right? Um, not heavily platooning. They have bench players on their team, right? There's so much more you can get out of a lineup. And I see this one thing all the time. People all the time come to me or post in the Discord or things like this where they go, hey, I was a playoff team the past two weeks and I have the same team and I got relegated. Why? Why is the game so random? Every single person in the game is trying to get better. If you're not trying to get better, you are losing. Okay. Very, very, very important. If you're not trying to get better in the game, you are losing ground. So this isn't just like a, I know everything, nobody else knows anything. And I know I came across that way and I'm sorry for it. I didn't mean it that way. But really, I'm trying to say, I've been playing this game completely wrong for like two and a half, three years. Well, people call me an expert for some reason, right? I'm learning and I'm growing and there's a lot more I have to do. It's the reason you haven't seen a model from me in a few months, right? A big spreadsheet. So what I've been working on all day is this. Not only is this completely built from scratch hitter model. That's too zoomed out. Let's, let's zoom in more. Uh, it's completely built from scratch. I don't think I have it right yet. Okay. There's things like this I have been working on. Okay. <laughs> this is... is Every pitcher in the meta verse right or verse left and vice versa for each hand. And that goes into the hitter calculation. So I'm trying to get better at this too. I just want to like teach people what I know, right? Uh, so again, let's go back. I keep saying we'll talk about it. Let's talk about what do I do if I don't have the big names? Well, that is the beauty of of the four man rotation, okay? That is the beauty of it. Um, and the reason it's so good is you spread out all your innings. And we just talked about how pitchers are so similar, right? There are pitchers like, I know there's a meme card now after what happened with them in the final. There are pitchers like this card. This card is like a top 20 pitcher in the game. There's 50,000 points. You can get 100 innings out of this card. <laughs> like, 
I don't know, like maybe an 11th or a 12th of your pitching that year out of this card, one of the best in the game, it's 50 grand, right? So all the time people come to me and they're like, I don't have the money for the big cards. What do I do? This is what you do. There's so many of these cards right now. And even if you don't have the top starting pitchers, look who I'm throwing. This card is 50 grand again. And he's got four and a half war for me last week and 260 innings. So there are so many of these cards. The only one caveat I see a lot of people miss is with the, um, the four man rotation. You need a lot of stamina on your team in the rotation and in the bullpen, right? You can only have so many Eckersley's. I normally limit it to about three in the 12 man rotation, right? Um, but there's, I think resource allocation is a big thing to me right right now and even the people who i think have all the cards or have the resources to have all the cards shouldn't really have the problem right but there's so many of you like myself i can't get all the cards right we talked about this yeah i have cc5 done that was i sold literally everything i could afford to do cc5 right and it worked out for me. It worked really well. Not always going to happen, right? But you can still take somebody like this and turn them into a superstar with how the game is being played right now. Right? Uh, stoppers are good if you're doing the four-man rotation. Do not play them if you are five-manning, long pitch counting, that kind of stuff, right? So I'm going to transition now and i know i'm not really taking questions i'm just going but i'm feeling it so we're gonna keep going right um we're gonna talk about defense and ballparks and why something off i think it was charles who's in the chat we're about tbd said to me that changed literally everything about how i play this in defense right Defense is great. Defense is really, really important. But you're playing twice as much defense as you need to be. Okay? Twice as much. Almost everybody <laughs> who I see is playing too much defense. And it's not because defense is bad. It's because they're not playing it correctly. So let's talk about that. Now, if we go to my lineup. We can look at something that's really crazy. Jack Glasscock. I fully trained him. He was fully trained about two games into this season, right? He was at 160 or 120, 121 when the season started, right? He's playing second base. He's got a pretty decent bat. He can run, but he's like the best defensive second baseman you can play other than Granny Hamner. Okay. This card is awesome. Now, if we look at the fielding stats, I have never, never <laughs> playing out of the park seen a second baseman in 70 games put up 14 runs defensively. 14. Never seen it. Ever. <laughs> um, Trey Turner's also great. For the record, I think Glasscock, Turner... And Nap Lajue are like three sides of the same coin. They're all fantastic. All very good cards at second base, right? So how, how am I getting Jack Glasscock to do this? This is absurd. I, I, I literally, I've never seen, normally like the stat you want to look at to see if somebody is a really good defender. I think Monty Ward's awful, by the way. I think Monty Ward is terrible. However, uh, Monty Ward is like one of the worst bats you could ever put. I'll talk about like playing completely dead bats in a bit. Cause that's like a big topic right now. Um, so the normally for me, ZR is really good when you're putting up like 0.1 per game. Glasscock is doubling that. And like I said, I've almost never seen this happen. Even like, I don't think the PTMS Aussie last year 
put up ZR at a rate like this, okay? So how, why? Let's talk about it. Again, you are playing twice as much defense as you need to be. Look at my team. I am playing this card in right field. I am playing this card in left field. I am playing this card in left field. Okay. Now I am playing Oscar in right field, but that's because I think Oscar personally for me is my favorite card all cycle, right? Oscar is great. Speaker is great. I know people were saying as well that like speaker wasn't worth the money. I mean, just, just look at this. I'm not, by the way, I'll show you my stadium in a second, okay? This card is not playing in a park that is built around it. It is, in fact, almost the opposite, okay? This card is playing in a nerfed park and putting up numbers like this, all while playing positive defense. I understand it's not perfect league. He's probably a neutral fielder in perfect league, okay? So, why is my team setting up this way? Why am I completely punting the outfield and then I'm playing a card like Glasscock in the infield, right? It's really, 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 really simple. And like I've seen some people mentioning, it has nothing to do with this card being a stream ground ball. See that? Ignore it. It doesn't... It probably matters a little bit, but it had nothing came into my mind when I was constructing the team. All right, I guess that's also a stream ground ball. What are you? You're fly ball. See, it, it, I don't think that matters. What's important is this. So let's talk about a ballpark, all right? So ballparks are very, very important. But I think up until pretty recently, most people have not been utilizing their ballparks correctly. And someone brought up cheese earlier. I think cheese is pretty terrible. So when you want to do cheese, okay, is when you can't afford all the cards, so you have to compensate, right? So the reason to cheese is I can't get Babe Ruth, I can't get Ted Williams, but I'm going to lose if I don't play them. So I'm going to play righty cheese. I'm going to play all the righties, right? Maybe you did CC5. There's a bunch of big righties in there, right? You got Honus, you got Walter, Pedro, Maddox. You can't afford all the cards. The reason why neutral is so much better than cheese is because neutral lets you play however you want in the playoffs, right? However you want in the playoffs. Back when people were complaining about cheese to be nerfed last year, early last year, Whale King, who does not get credit enough for how good of a player he was, was playing a neutral ballpark and absolutely dumpstering people in the playoffs every single week. And the reason was, he was completely flexible. He ran a neutral lineup for openers both ways, and you could not get an edge on him. He just played better cards than you because he had all the cards, right? And that's a really strong thing to do. So why does my ballpark look like this? Let's talk about it, all right? First off, uh, a little bit is the cheese factor, okay? I do not have the power hitters. I don't have pools. I don't have babe. I think judge is terrible, okay? Um, so I'm not going to play power. Also, a lot of the hitters I think are underrated right now are contact hitters. George Brett, Tris Speaker, Oscar Charleston, Stan Musial, right? Those are guys that hit for contact, hit for average. They're very strong. Now, here's where it gets weird and where I think I have a massive edge on the game right now, okay? And again, this is all from one-off comment that Charles made to me. Why am I playing a contact ballpark with hitters with huge gap power and I've minned my doubles and triples, right? They are minimum, okay? I do not... <laughs> I get a lot of singles, but here's the reason. And this is the most important thing about ballpark factors are probably your doubles and triples. Okay. 
That's going to shock a lot of most... A lot of people, they'll run cheese. They'll leave the doubles and triples neutral. They'll do big power park. They leave the doubles and triples neutral. They'll run offense. They put up the doubles and triples. They run defense. They turn them down. Okay? Here's the thing. This number is more like... Does the ball get hit to the outfield or does it get hit to the infield? And I don't have all the math behind it. It's something I'm working on, right? But if you look at it that way, and it does correlate that way, okay? Doubles and triples, if you lower them, your infield defense is much more important. And if you turn them up, your outfield defense is much more more important and so when i'm saying you're playing twice as much defense as you need to be you are either leaving this neutral right and you have to cover all the ground equally or you are not leaving it neutral you're doing something with it and if you don't know about it then you're probably getting punished somehow but what I can do is turn it down, play a card, which I already think is super good, just neutrally, in Jack Glasscock. And then I can do something like play Harry Heilman in right field because I'm poor and I want more hitters in my lineup. Right? So, when we're talking about ballparks... Most of the time, what I will do is I will take one or two players, right? One or two players. And I will say, I really like these players. Maybe I like how they match up against current pitching. Maybe I just think nobody else is using them for some reason and they have really good stats. Maybe there's something I want to try that counters the current popular build. Um, so... What I did in this case was I said, well, what I have is I have this Jack Glasscock because my dad pulled it. I bought it the day after it came out for L10. And I said, I really like this card. I'm going to train this card at second base. You know, maybe I get screwed. Maybe CC5 has Eddie Collins or Roger Hornsby and it doesn't work for me. But I said, you know what? I'm going to do it. I like this card. So far, it's worked. We're probably getting one of those cards tonight, and I lose my hedge, but it's been fun up until now, right? Um, I said, you know what? I just had CC5 done, right? And I was looking at my cards, and I say, a lot of these cards I really like hit contact. This is a card, you know? It's a, it's about a neutral defender. It's probably under in perfect league, right? So it's, it's a little low below average, but the bat is so good good this bat is absurd for a contact hitter right this bat is crazy uh i love this card i've been talking about this like all week how much i think this card is super important to any team you can see mine is fully trained right um tris speaker contact hitter fantastic so i don't really need to go to power again i don't have ted i don't have pool holes i don't have babe right so now we talk about the pitching I have the th big three pitchers that I can throw on my team, right? I have the big three. So what am I going to do with that? I'm going to play the five-man rotation. What does that let me do? It lets me put another person in my lineup. Okay, great. So I got a little bit going, right? I'm going to play my CC5 cards. I'm going to play the Jack Glasscock. I'm going to put an extra hitter in my team, right? So... Where do we go from here? I always try and as soon as possible, once I've decided the few things I want to do, I go and make my ballpark. Why? Because your ballpark turns all the people that are kind of similar, right? So you take all these guys. There's like a million first basemen that are interchangeable, right? There are Stan Musial, Ted Klewinski, Lou Gehrig, Willie McCovey, I don't know, Johnny Mice, David Ortiz, what they just come out with, Jason Giambi. You could play any of those cards, Jim Tomei. Right? And they're good. They're all fine. They're very similar. 
So the thing about picking your ballpark early, okay, is it lets you choose, well, which of these few cards that are all similar, some are cheaper than others. Maybe you don't have the money for some of the expensive ones, so use some of the cheaper ones, right? How do I, you know, which one am I going to pick, right? So you can do that. You can settle that out. Then there's some really interesting construction choices that I don't see enough people go for. All right. So here's something I did, which I don't know if it's correct, but let's talk about it. Okay. And I see everyone talking about the giveaway. Um, we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, this card. Okay. This card. Why am I playing this card? It's a 35,000 point card. Okay. I went out of my way and I bought it for this. It's an okay hitter. It's a tier below the other first baseman. Why am I playing this card at first base? It's really funny, actually. It's because it says second base on it. Second base on it. So there's there's better single hitters. It is a single hitter, which is good, right? But it says second base. So again, we talked about how important it is to get platoons in your lineup. What does this let me do? I don't need a backup second baseman. I don't have the money to have anybody platoon with Glasscock, nor do I think I should have a platoon for Glasscock. So it lets me get a player in VR. That's a lefty. And it lets me actually get another player in on either side of the lineup. So I don't have to play Pop Lloyd on my bench. Pop Lloyd is awful now. Right? <laughs> so. Things like that, right? This is why I've been so passionate about this stuff the past few weeks is because I think there are miles and miles we can all improve, including myself. If you see how much I've learned just over, like, this has been like two or three months, right? Not even, okay? So, there's a lot of, lot of, lot of places to improve, right? Um, whether you choose to go the five-man rotation because you have the big starting pitchers, whether you... Go the four-man rotation because you're on a tight budget, but you can squeeze in extra hitters, right? Um, this team is not an expensive team, and I'm getting hammered by a snail man right now, but this is a perennial playoff diamond team right now. And so many of you, that's all you need is that shot to get into perfect league, right? Just that shot hitting, you know, hitting diamond playoffs. That's really all you need. Um this is a really cheap team with a glass cock and CC5, right? That's it. That's it. So before CC5 came out, this was like a 650,000 point team. And if you're an active player, you've been grinding tournaments, you've been doing what you should be doing to be in Diamond League, you could not put a dollar into this game and... You'd, you'd have much more money than I have because I've been very lazy this year, right? That's it. So, uh, we got four minutes left. Uh, 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 uh. I don't actually know how to run a giveaway because my bot is broken. Chat, you have like two minutes to come up with an idea. I'm going to see if I can get the bot online. The last time I tried it would not work. Uh, 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 uh. Ah. All right. Here. Try enter. Enter that. Everyone do that. Exclamation mark 20 packs in the chat. 
We're going to pick one winner for 20 packs for tonight. Again, thank you out of the park for giving everybody packs. If you have not gotten your drops today, there's more to come. We have Euchre in after me. And then to close it off, Dishnet, with what sounds like to be an amazing content set tonight. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming out and watching. We somehow gained viewers. I know I missed a raid from PBE. Thank you for that, too. Um, thanks for Laptop Pound uh, for starting it up. A um, lot of awesome things today. This has just been a really wonderful experience. Um, if you uh, if you want to hear more about like what I've been talking about, join my Discord. Um, if you, I'm not gonna be able to post the link because everyone's spamming. You get an exclamation mark, twenty packs to enter the giveaway. Um, you can message me on Discord. I'm in the out of the park server. Your kidneys hashtag seven four nine four is my handle. I always take messages from anyone. I can't promise I'll remember to respond, but I try to. Okay. Um, you guys are awesome. It's why I'm doing everything I'm doing. Um, there will be more spreadsheets next year. I don't think I'll get something out before out of the park 24. So it's probably the last of what I do. What I do, if you're unfamiliar, is I make a Excel spreadsheet that basically projects how players should play in the current meta environment, right? Um, so stuff like that. So um, again... Really, thank you everybody for coming out. There's more, so stay tuned. Yukarin's a great friend of the stream, fantastic streamer. Um, so, yeah, again, so thank you everybody. I'll, I will not go another. I don't remember what it is. Let's see. It's been over a month since I last streamed. All right. Uh, follow the channel. Um, again, message me on Discord if you want to invite to my server. That is the easiest way to know when I go live because I'm so inconsistent. EBC, you just gave out. I've been talking so much. You gave out five subs, including to my dad. Thank you. Um, the giveaway winner is... It is PJ Kings MJ. Uh, DM me on Twitch or Discord. Your username... Uh, I know you is a long time perfect team player. Um, happy to see a, a whole player win. Um, DM me Twitch or Discord your PT username, correct capitalization, please, and I'll get you those packs. We're gonna bundle them all together and give one post to Nicolino to do it. Again, thank you to the Out of the Park. Thank you to Laptop Pound. Thank you to the other affiliates. Um, it's just been an awesome day today. So. Yeah, all right, I'm going to start the raid. Again, we're going over to Eucharin. She's the last uh, last bit of the chain before we hit Dishnet tonight with probably some awesome content. Um, and yeah, that's all. So let's do the raid. Hopefully I spelled that right. It's ready. I did spell it right. Make sure you join the raid. Again, there's 170 people here. You're all awesome, um, even if you're just here for drops. Um, again, there will be another giveaway in Yuka stream. Don't miss that. Another 20 packs handed out, plus drops if you miss those. And then we got the main tonight. So thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, Y'all are awesome, and I'll see you next time.